Earlier in the year, when I reviewed the Sound Devices Mix Pre 3 audio recorder, which features time code out as well as 32 bit float recording, which can be really awesome for some, you know, making sure that you don't clip your microphone, I had a bunch of comments asking, well, what about the Zoom F6? Doesn't it do the same thing? Yeah, it kind of does. Naturally, I wanted to check it out, and they had actually reached out to loan me a unit for me to review. That's what we're going to be doing here today. Quick summary, though. It's basically the same thing as the Mix Pre 3, but you get more inputs and outputs for your money, which is advantageous to some people. There's a little bit of a pro and con between the two with regards to the physical controls and some of the options available. But overall, it is a great solution, especially if you're going in a sound bag just due to the form factor. But if you're trying to use it kind of run and gun style or for, you know, a YouTuber setup style, some of the control issues may give you trouble. Full disclosures, as always, the Zoom F6 here was sent on loan for review by Zoom Audio, whatever their full name is, <laughs> as always. Uh, but they have no input into the video. They're not seeing it before it's, in post before it's been posted. They're not sponsoring the video, anything like that. So full disclosures, as always. I'm Impulse Fox here to make tech easier and more fun. Welcome back to Gearhead, my gear review show where I focus on audio and video gear for content creators. This is the Zoom F6 audio recorder. It costs about 650 bucks retail and has six XLR uh, mic or line level inputs, as well as a six in four out audio interface over USB, which is pretty cool. It has a wide gamut of features, many of which I would never use, but are you know very useful to a lot of people. You've got uh, you can record in up to 32-bit float up to 192 kilohertz. So you can get the highest quality audio possible pretty much in that 32-bit float mode, which if you don't remember or didn't see my review of the Mix Pre 3, this is a new audio bit mode, which is basically seen kind of as raw audio, wherein you have, I believe, 132 decibels of dynamic range on your audio so that you can pretty much never clip or, you know, if you can, it's a, an absurd sound that would always clip, you know, your microphone before it even makes it to the recorder. That way you can record, you know, the loudest sounds and the quietest sounds together and either lower them or bring them up and have no real added hiss or noise floor or anything like that from the recorder itself. So, of course, with that, each of these XLR inputs have some really high quality preamps that can provide up to 75 dB of gain and have a ridiculously low noise floor. They've also, if you're recording in the normal 24-bit mode or outputting to a camera or something, they have these new advanced hybrid uh, look-ahead limiters, which basically kind of put a delay on the recording so that the limiters can look ahead to your audio, and if it thinks it's going to clip, automatically adjust for that to prevent you from clipping. So while you can record the full range without clipping in 32-bit mode, you can actually just kind of shout into your microphone in 24-bit mode and still potentially not have the same kind of clip distortion that you normally have. I mentioned more I.O. for your money. The Mix Pre 3, of course, has three inputs for the same price, uh, and this one has the six, so that's double if you'd actually ever use double. I personally am fine with the inputs on the Mix Pre 3. However, you do have additional setup here. There is no 3.5 millimeter line in like on the Mix Pre 3, which alternates with that third XLR jack, but you do have a dedicated 3.5 millimeter line out. You have a dedicated headphone out, and then a dedicated time code out or in, depending on how you want to use it. So that way you're not trading off the line out for the time code out as you might be on the Mix Pre 3, which is really cool to see. They have an expansion port here for hooking up your, uh, they do have the Zoom F control series, or you could connect via Bluetooth for controlling this, basically like a mixer from your iPad or iPhone or iOS device. I don't use Apple products pretty much, so I can't test this, but I hear it's really cool. Uh, go check out Curtis Judd's review. I believe he has some videos covering the full F control setup. On top of the analog inputs and outputs, you also have a USB type C port, which can act as dedicated power. It can act as a file backup to back up whatever's being recorded to the SD card inside to an external drive. It can also act as an audio interface, as I mentioned before. So you can actually record via an audio interface to a full DAW software in your computer and still record to the SD card as a backup if you'd like. If you are recording as an audio interface, uh, it will only record up to 96 kilohertz. And then if you're recording as an audio interface and to the SD card simultaneously, it will only do up to 48 kilohertz if that matters to you. Now I kind of glossed over this, but this does also have time code in and out, which means it can actually send out a time code sync signal to your camera so that your camera and your audio recorder always stay in sync instead of having to rely on clappers. 
I originally picked up the Mix Pre 3 for that purpose to, to pair with my Ursa Mini Pro and have a timecode signal going there because I've had some issues with syncing in the past. And so this includes it as well. And that is always great to see that these devices are now including it for a cheaper setup. On the back, you do have the SDXC card slot, which can go up to 512 gigs. Uh, I, I am really annoyed physically by this slot. It has this very obnoxious, you know, takes up a lot of space, open door. And then the card is right up against, if I grab one here, it is right up against the top of that sled, which is just really awkward to get in there in the first place. And then when you do get it loose, you just really have to like squeeze your fingers around it to try to get a grip on it and pull the card out, which is not ideal and is a pain in the butt as someone who is constantly, you know, recording a session for 30 minutes to an hour, pulling the card out, putting it in, you know, that I'm not leaving it in at all times. It gets really annoying dealing with that. I do like, however, that the uh, Sony NPF or L series battery sled is built in. I had a lot of issues with the one for the Mix Pre 3. Like I was bending my fingernails back and stuff whenever I was trying to loosen it off the device. It was just a big pain in the butt. And the default one, uh, the style of sticking the two batteries off the top and bottom meant fitting it in certain places was really awkward. This is just a nice slim profile fit on the back, which works a lot better for audio bags and just makes it easier to use overall. So I really like a lot about the physical form factor about this, but I also don't like a lot of it. Some of the dials feel pretty wobbly and they're super tight and close together. Again, for an audio bag, that is perfect because you set your levels real quick, they lock into place and then you slide it in your bag and they're not gonna accidentally get turned or moved or anything like that. And I do like that they click off, which actually digitally tells the recorder not to record your, you know, that track, really cool but they're just really hard to fiddle with as a individual creator not using a sound bag. Uh, the menu system, even though the buttons are really hard to press, the menu system is actually fantastic as well. But again, the physical ergonomics of it are just really annoying. On the bottom, you do have a battery sled. You have a few different battery options, and it does come with a four AA uh, battery tray inside, which is nice to see. And then it even comes with a mounting plate, so you can actually put this between your tripod and your camera which is really cool as well. So they have a lot of options built into here and it's a nice compact size. Just some of it's a little awkward to work with and the headphone dial is kind of, you know, hard to get at sometimes. Whereas they put that Lego wheel on the one on the Mix Pre 3. Eh. Being able to power this off of USB though has been super clutch. I love that these things have this option now, which means I can just put a super big USB battery bank, slap it on top and power this for days. And I've actually I've just been using this with NPF batteries and even the, I believe 500 ish size of the MPF batteries. Granted, I'm not recording for hours and hours straight, but just, you know, recording 30 minutes to an hour here or there across, you know, a two week period. I'm not having to charge the battery very often at all, which is really, really nice. The headphone out on this is a little weak compared to the sound devices mix pre three, nothing super important, probably on set. But if you're doing some serious mixing or want like a good audio experience, if this is to be your dedicated audio interface as well, it's not as good as the Mix Pre 3 is, but that is fine, I guess. In terms of recording specs, again, you get absurdly high quality audio. Uh, again, go check out Curtis Judd's review. He did found a little find a little bit of a difference between like the warmth of the preamps on this compared to the Mix Pre 3 with the Mix Pre 3 being a little bit more warm. Uh, which would play to my vocals a little bit better. I can't say that I've really noticed anything significant either way. Like, I, I see what he's getting at, but it's not, you know, if you just picked this up and ran with it, you would never know that was a problem, and it would not be, like, an active problem for you. So, totally fine. You can account for that in EQ if you need to. Totally fine. Uh, but you do, I mean, it just means that I get to slap on 32-bit mode, or you can actually record... Uh, 32-bit and 24-bit or 32-bit and send it out to your camera and just have 32-bit as a backup. So you're sending it to your camera to record and then you only need to activate or, you know, access whatever's on the SD card if it clips out in your camera. And, but you can't record 192 kilohertz if you're worried about that without turning off the, the new limiters, the stereo mix, and the, because you do have, I'll talk about that in a second, you do have a bunch of track routing options and the auto mix capability, which is pretty cool. Uh, otherwise, you're limited to 96 kilohertz, which is fine. Now, those two features I talked about are actually really cool about this device in that it has an auto mix capability for podcasters to basically just record all of your tracks and it will automatically lower. Now, granted, it's not by a significant amount. It's not cutting them off, but it will try to lower and raise the levels of certain speakers when they're not talking to try to, you know, prevent multiple mic reverb or echo or talk back or anything like that and keep a decent balance for podcasts or talk shows or something like that. It's a pretty cool feature. 
and just the pure number of audio tracks you can record in this is a really cool feature as well because you get all six audio tracks from mic one through six recorded individually and you can get a stereo mix and you could do that in 24-bit and 32-bit modes which is a lot of tracks being recorded at once and what i really like especially for my youtube creation purposes which bugs me about the mix pre 3 is on this one if i turn off all of the other audio inputs and i'm just recording my main microphone my shotgun microphone to my camera recording then it just records a mono track the way i have it set up because i turned off the stereo mix so i can just record a single mono track and then immediately start working with that without having to separate tracks or anything like that for my youtube workflow that's really freaking handy and the fact that you get so much fine fine tune control over what audio tracks you're recording is really sick so conclusion time overall mix pre 3 versus zoom f6 for 650 bucks they are both fantastic devices and frankly unless you need 32-bit mode or the time code there's previous generations of both of these products that you could go get cheaper now that would also do you a lot of justice you don't always need these super high-end audio recorders to get great audio but jumping to my original mix pre 3 and the mark 2 and now this over some of my cheaper audio recorders i started my youtube career with workflow wise there are a lot of benefits even if you may argue that the quality difference is never really noticeable on youtube 32-bit preventing me from clipping if i mess up a mic recording or if i just get too close all of a sudden or if i start shouting is very helpful and a lot of the features in here can be very handy especially if you do podcasts or shows with multiple hosts product links as always affiliate links on bnh for this product and the mix pre 3 along with the link to my review of the mix pre 3 mark 2 will be in the description below go check them out support the channel hit the like button if you enjoyed the video subscribe for more tech education i'm Vox. i'll see you next time